Daydream for Days says, I have a question on your opinion of what qualifies someone as an engineer. Is there specific degree requirements or is it more like an artist where it's more defined by mentality or method? Um, I, 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 so you're asking someone with no degree in engineering, which should make my answer suspect right away. Um, I was just in Calgary, which was an absolutely delightful weekend. Got to have dinner with some really good friends, Ben Eady at Al and see some amazing costumes. Oh my God, I ran into a Miss Piggy that made my heart melt. Um, but um, one of the several engineers, Canadian engineers came up to me and talked to me about getting into engineering because of Mythbusters. And that was really amazing. And they all were wearing the ring. In Canada, when you get an engineering degree, they give you a ring that signifies you're an engineer. I'm so jealous of that ring. One of my fans came to the table with a 3D printed, resin printed engineer's ring that they gave me and I put it on and I wore it all weekend. It felt great. It was lovely. Um, my journey on Mythbusters was one of coming to understand that I am a scientist and that I am an engineer. I do not think that these are degree-based titles necessarily. I think that you could have a degree as an engineer and not be a good engineer. And I think you can be a brilliant engineer and have no degree. Both of those things are true. Um, I think in general, by and large, degrees are great. Training programs are great. They turn out, they turn out people committed to the thing that they're interested in. Um, and I want to state also, like when I was a younger person, I was totally science obsessed. I loved reading the science stories. I, the, Tuesday, the, the Science Times and the New York Times was like, the New York Times arrived at my house every day for my whole life growing up. And the Tuesday Science Times was always my favorite day of the week. Um, and yet I still thought of science as something smart people did. And by saying that to myself, I was v clearly placing myself outside that category. Um, and we were doing a shoot yesterday uh, at a museum and one of the volunteer docents at the museum was talking to me about something on display. And it's a classic moment that happens to me sometimes is they're using deep jargon about the esoteric nature of the object we are both talking about. And I don't understand what they're saying, but they assume that I come with this knowledge. And it took Jamie and I a while to realize that was this deep compliment being given by other scientists and engineers that like, you you know, we just think of you as one of us. Jamie and I'd be driving away from locations being like, man, they talked to us like we knew what they were talking about. And then we realized, right, it's because scientifically, engineering wise, they see a simpatico mind. They see in the hosts of our show, simpatico minds to tackle interesting problems and there isn't an engineer or scientist worth their salt that isn't fascinated by difficult problems to solve. That's what it takes to be an engineer or a scientist to me, is you are interested in solving complicated, interesting problems. Um, there's this, when you say like an artist, where it's more defined by a mentality or method, it's such a I will have stuff to say in the next few months. I'm slowly working on this idea about artists and creativity and the way we think about it culturally and the way I think about it culturally, professionally, personally. Um, because I feel like, I feel like there's some refinement in the verbiage about creativity and being an artist that, um, that I could get to something interesting. Uh, oh yes, Patrick Hennessy was wondering, do you ever recycle the metal swarf? Swarf is the stuff that comes out of your machine tools. Um, here, this is, I just pulled this out of the bottom of my lathe. This is swarf. This is all the metal cutoffs that come off from cutting parts on the machine tools. Uh, I do not generate enough of this to save or recycle it. Um, 
yes, we put the aluminum in the recycling bin, but you know, San Francisco, I'm not even sure it's getting to, I'm not even sure they're separating at the, at the landfills anymore. Uh, but, but, I do save the brass swarf because you can put this on a, uh, 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 on a heated uh, tray and use this to do very sensitive, delicate bluing of small parts without overheating them. Uh, I learned that from Chris at Clickspring, so I always save my brass swarf. Um, but the aluminum swarf, I know, I could cut myself on the murder foil. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you call this stuff. This is, this swarf, man, this swarf will give you paper cuts. Paper cuts, I've got a couple just from last week. Um, yeah, and then I saw on our machinists that people call this murder foil, which is a totally appropriate term. So, daydream for days. I, I don't think that there is a specific degree or requirement. And I, oh man, yeah, right, so... I still think I piss people off when I call myself a scientist and engineer. I'm sure I do. Um, I'm sure there are people that take umbrage at that after their 12, 16, 20 years of schooling and post-grad work. Absolutely, I could imagine that. And I really say that with all the humility of understanding that it is a mindset rather than a skill base. That I don't know the math, but I know the intuition and I know the mindset and I feel like that qualifies me. Um, you know, uh, I think that all of these things are ways in which humans have always been. And that's why I feel so, I feel very comfortable calling myself an engineer. And it, really specifically, it's because in my late 50s now, I feel a deep connection to people who have made things forever. And I love pulling up things like a 40,000 year old ivory lion figure dug up in, in, in England. Uh, tools, damascing, dem damascening tools from the 1920s. Uh, I feel a connection to craftspeople going to the beginning of humans using tools. I really do, and it's a beautiful feeling. It feels like a wonderful continuum, and it feels like that wonderful quote, standing on the shoulders of giants, it, it feels like that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I wanted to briefly mention that you could become a tested member. I know, everybody is competing for you to become a member of their thing. What I want to express to you is that the tested membership has become such an important part of the tested family. We get tremendous feedback from the tested members, and they expand the stories that we can tell and the things that we have access to, and you can become a part of it right now by clicking on the link below. See you in the chat.